This is from an EMT wanting the basics of shock. Let's do it. There are four functional types of shock. Let's go through them. Number one, hypovolemic, low volume. External bleeding, internal bleeding, they're the no-brainers, but they're not the only ones. How about the profoundly hyperglycemic patient who's peeing out their volume? Or the baby who's not feeding well and is having a lot of diarrhea? Low volume can come from a number of ways. Number two, distributive shock. We have the same amount of blood, but it's not being distributed properly. We normally have vessels of a certain size. We lose vascular tone. Conditions like sepsis and anaphylaxis cause this. That can cause shock. That's distributive shock. Number three, obstructive shock. We think largely of traumatic causes. Cardiac tamponade, the, the fluid in our pericardial sac, blood or whatever happens, fluid happens to be there, compresses the heart. It can't fill well. That causes obstructive shock. Tension pneumothorax is the other one. Pressure builds in the chest. Our low pressure vessels depend on pressures within the chest to get blood back to the right side of the heart. The low pressure and fear of vena cava is trying to get that blood back, but that tension pneumothorax is keeping that from happening. That's obstructive shock. Finally, number four is cardiogenic shock. Yeah, we think of pump failure. We have a left-sided MI takes out our left ventricle. That's not very good. The pump may fail. But don't forget that we can also have rhythm problems like bradycardia. Remember, our cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. If my heart rate goes down to 38, my cardiac output drops, my blood pressure drops, I'm in shock. But if my heart rate goes up to 200 or 220, now it's beating so fast, the chambers of my heart can't fill. That reduces my cardiac output. That can also cause shock. Those four types of shock again, hypovolemic, distributive, obstructive, and cardiogenic. All types of shock fit into those four categories.